Hello everyone, uh, this is Hybrid Account. Welcome uh, to Correlation Analysis. We have two methods for use to compute correlation coefficient uh, called the product moment or a person's method, but also the rank uh, of the amount method. All right, let's take a look on how the product moment method is used, right? How do we use that? Actually, the product moment correlation coefficient finds out how close two sets of points lie to a straight line or line of base fit, something called the line of base fit. We'll see that well under regression analysis. Simply speaking, the formula for correlation coefficient B, X depends on variable Y or variable Y depends on variable X. And so the property that our correlation coefficient is symmetric. All right. So uh, R equals to covariance between X and Y covariance of the two variables divided by the product of the standard deviation of each variable. So standard deviation of x, variable x, times standard deviation of variable y. But usually uh, we can simplify this very well. So let's go down here and see what we do. So from statistics, this is the method to determine the covariance between x and y. You take x minus mean of x, then y minus mean of y, you multiply them and then you determine the summation. And after that, actually, you divide by the number of data pairs between x and y, right? Just like that. And then to determine the standard deviation, you know, standard deviation now is of x. Simply speaking, standard deviation is a square root of variance. So that's why this one is a variance. So the deviation, the square root, you can see there is a square root. So presume that you have the square root up here. But right now, we are only speaking of a single variable, x. So whenever you find y here, you can put it, you can presume it to be x. So yes, it should be x minus mean of x. So x minus mean of x times x minus mean of x would be x minus mean of x squared. And then since we are we have the square root, you should not say that we are, you are canceling this because we first have to sum them. So you sum them and then you take the square root and then everything is obtained, right? We presume that this is the full data, it's not a sample, right? Okay. For samples, we would see under the topic of estimation. And then standard deviation of y, you just do the same thing. So you just replace the variables. We had x here, right now we have y. So y minus mean of y, uh, you, 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 you square the values and then you sum them all and then take the square root, average of the square root, right? Something like that. So simply speaking, how do you turn the mean of x, but also the mean of y? When the data is ungrouped, uh, usually the case under these scenarios, we just say that mean of x equal to the summation of x divided by n. This symbol means summation, right? Instead of saying sum, you just use this symbol here. Differentiated the symbol for integration. Integration is a continuous summation. This is not a continuous summation. It's a discrete summation. And the mean of y should be summation of y divided by n, something like that. All right, now to, to make matters simple, uh, if you take the above formulas and plug them together, you would simply determine the correlation coefficient in the following manner, right? Just say n times summation of x, y minus summation of product of summation of x and summation of y, then divide by square root of, as you see the square roots here, they are down here. So n times, uh, summation of x square minus actually square summation of x and then you put y there again. So simply speaking, when you know the above figure, to know the below figures should be very simple. You see, n times summation of x, y minus summation of x, summation of y. When you come down here, put the square root and then assume as if you are writing, you are copying the above one, but now presume all the variables being x first. So this one should be x times x, which is x n x squared, as you see it here. And then you proceed, uh, this one should be summation of x times summation of x, which gives you the square of summation of x, something like this. And then you, you repeat everything, you repeat the same, but now all, having all the variables is y. So you'd have something like this here, right? Yes, after having this, uh, everything uh, would be set. And so you have your formula for product moment method of correlation, something like this. All right. Uh, as you said, uh, x is one variable, y the other variable, and n is the number of data pair between x and y, something like that. All right, so uh, what for, what next in line is just an example. So I hope you're ready for this example here. This is an example, HFC Limited has the following results for the past periods. You have the following result for HFC Limited, units produced, and the total cost. So for 20 units, we incurred the cost of 60,000 TZDS, Currents 
25 units are 66,000 actually have been provided with seven data pairs of one first one second third fourth fifth and seventh right okay what are we required to do right now we are told that uh deduce the correlation coefficient between total cost and units produced so all we need right here is the correlation coefficient nothing much actually so uh first of all you need to um let uh you are very to, to, to let you are to actually you are, you have you would have to, to, to let you these these properties given here these attributes you would have to give them the values assign the attributes right so let's say maybe units produced are equal to x and then total cost equals to y something like that let x be units produced and y total cost so you have x and here we have y so we just copy them right just copy these figures now note that for cost here i they were in thousand but i ignored them why did i ignore them you have 20 up to 45 20 and 60 not 60,000. why did i ignore them you know correlation coefficient is independent of both scale and the origin so since it is independent of scale you are allowed to divide that figure for, for y by a thousand for example here I could say that, oh, I've decided to divide all these figures here by a thousand, so it should remain 6666. Six, six, six. So whenever you, you, you decide to divide six, this 6000 by a thousand, you have to divide all the figures for total cost. For example, I could say that, oh, all these figures here, all these figures for units produced are divisible by five. I could say divide them by five. So this one for 20 could be four. This one 25 of five, five. 30 over 5, 6, 35 over 5, 7, 40 over 5, 8, 45 over 5, 9, and 50 over 5, 10. Then I should have obtained exactly the same answer. This comes from the properties of correlation, as I told you here, right? Whenever you have a variable x and you need to change it to any variable u, correlation coefficient is independent of origin, but also of scale. So you can deduct any value from the variables and then you can divide or multiply by any value to write. So that one is perfectly fine. All right, let's proceed with our question here. So I will proceed copying my numbers, uh, that one in the last, that one, and then the last number you have 50 against 90, right? All these numbers come from one formula here, from one question, right? 50, 90, the last ones. All right, so I uh, can just proceed here. So from our equation, I think we saw this equation, right? We said that correlation coefficient equals to n summation of x, y minus product of summation of x and y, then over square root of n summation of square of x minus square of summation of x, then then multiply by the same, but using the variable y. So you will find out that uh, I have the summation of x. I need the summation of x here. First of all, I have x. I have y here, but also I have x, y. Do you see x, y? I have x, y. I have x squared, but also I have y squared. That's why you, apart from what we have already provided with in the question, you would have to add these variables here, x, y, x squared, and then y squared, something like that. All right, so here you need x, y. So 20 times 60, you get uh, 1,200, something like that. Then uh, x squared here, so 20 squared equals to 400, and then y squared, 60 squared equals to 3600, something like that. Then you proceed. x times y, 25 times 66, you get 1650, then 25 squared, 625, 66 squared, which is y, gives you 4356, something like that, right? All right, you proceed here, uh, 30 times 69, here 2070. 30 squared, uh, 900, uh, 69 squared, 47, 61. Then you go on, 35 times 77, you have 26, 95. 35 squared, uh, 1225. 77 squared, 59, 29. Then you go on 40 times 82, which is x, y, get that at 280. 40 squared, uh, 1600. 82 squared, then you have 67, 24. And then you, you go on 45 times 88, 36, 9, 39, 60, 45 squared equals to 2025, uh, 88 squared equals to 74, 77, 44. And then here, lastly, we have x times y, 50 times 90, which is 4,500, 50 squared, uh, 25, 
100 and then 90 squared into 100, something like that. And then after that, uh, from the formula, you see out that you have to sum them. So you sum everything. 20 plus 25 plus 30 plus 35 plus 40 plus 45 plus 50, you have the summation of 245. So all you need is that you have to sum all the values here, right? 60, 66, 69, up to 90, you get 732. 1,200 up to 4,500, you have this figure here. And then here, 400, 625 up to 2,500, you get this figure here. Then the 275 and the Y squared, you just take 3,600 up to 8,100 and would have uh, this figure of 41,214. So what you do here, we only need N. What is N? N is the number of data pairs. From the question, we had the first pair 2016, the second one 2566, the third one 3069, the fourth 4577, the fifth 4082, the sixth 4588, the seventh 1590. So we have a total of seven data pairs. So that's what we are going to plug into the question here, right? All right, now as you can see here, you can see n equals to seven. That appears, so we have seven, then summation of x, y. Now you can see this from the question, right? You, you, you can see x, y there. x, y was 19,355, this one. And then we have product of x and y, 245 and 532. 245, 532, something like this. And then you proceed here. We have n, which is seven times summation of score of x which is 9275. So 7 times 9275, something like this here, minus the square of summation of x, which is 245 squared. And then we have 7 again times summation of uh, square of y, which is 41,214, something like this. And then we have the square of summation of y, which is, uh, which figure here was it? I think I wrote it, I didn't write it proper, right? Yeah, it should be 532 squared. This one is wrong. There is a typing error here. Not this, this one is not right. It should be 532, 532, right? 532. So I can just do something like this, uh, square of y. Right is properly, right? Sum, sum of y should be equal to 532. So you have to take 532 squared. Then if you just do that, you would actually arrive at your value, right? At the value of correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient that you would obtain here would be that one. Uh, you have to note that I, I think I told you already that you, don't, you do not have to use this one. This one should be 532, right? This one is not right. We say you 500 and 531, how much? 32, and then you square that. Now, if you do that, you would end up having correlation coefficient as 0 0.993. You see this correlation coefficient is very huge. You know, it's not, it's not a rule, but normally uh, we have the tendency uh, to say that maybe uh, when you have the correlation coefficient below 50% or below 0 0.5, you can say it's a very low correlation. And when it starts from uh, when it starts from 80% or 0 0.8, we say that is a high correlation. And between 50 and 80%, we could say the correlation is medium. So that's all. Uh, and then until uh, next time, thank you for being together. And then you can subscribe for regular updates.